Hi guys, welcome to Draw With Me. I didn't plug in my microphone. <laughs> oh no. Uh, hold on one second. It's one of those days. Can you hear me at all? Possibly not. <sighs> okay, let me just fix this. Build the microphone. Okay, try that. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes? Good. Tell me. Good, thank you. Sorry, one of those days trying to coordinate a lot of things because I had a lot of stuff that I wanted to show you today and talk about, and it was all ended up being last minute despite my best intention. So, I apologize for that, and uh, let's put it behind us. All right, good. Today's Thursday. It's time to draw with me. I am the late Danny Gregory, um, but I have a lot of things to tell you about, so let me, just get, let me just get coordinated about it. So one thing I wanted to tell you about was letters. I've gotten a lot of beautiful letters that have been sent in, and um, I have a gallery of them to show you, to take you through letters that people who wrote to me over the last three weeks um, after I did a letter writing suggestion a few weeks ago. So come on, don't, there you go. Um, so let me just pull that up and show you what it's, what it's all about. So here we go. So I will try my very best to remember the names of all the wonderful people who sent me pick, sent me stuff. And here we go. So, let's see. Here we have... I'm going to do it in order. Okay. So this is Becky. Becky sent me um, a letter. I'm just going to quickly go through them because there's a lot of them. And uh, I want to show you them all if I can. If my, There we go. So there are all different kinds of letters that people sent. This one has reference photos in it and illustrations. Um, let me get rid of this. <sighs> pick me, pick me. Yes, because I am going to pick somebody and uh, share with them a present of some kind. It's only right that we do that. This is from... J. May. Who's J. May? Oh, I was having one of those days where I just cannot get my stuff together. Okay. All right. Sorry, guys. This thing is taking a long time to show you. Yes, so here we see the, the back of the envelope. And she had a reason for explain, for it being hieroglyphicized, which is that it's all about um, it's all about virtual travel. And she traveled to very oh, good God. She traveled to virtual ver various places uh, virtually and these are some of the little sketches that she did from there. All right. I just love how, how varied people's responses to this suggestion was. Are you still not seeing it? This is a disaster, people. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let me bring it back up here. Come on. Come on, overlay. It's one of those days where I just feel like hanging up and going back to bed. But 
I won. All right. <laughs> Let me spend a minute trying to figure that out because I really do want to share you, show you these letters because they were really fantastic. Um, but for some reason, that's not working. Let's move on to something else. I want to tell you about our next workshop because we just announced it yesterday, and I'm very, I, this is a, a workshop with an artist who you probably don't know about. His name is Derek Bacon. And who doesn't love bacon, right? So Derek is a British artist who lives in the Netherlands, and he does extraordinary things with ink. He's a f very well-known illustrator, did a lot of work for The Economist, various other publications. Um, and he did this, uh, he did, had a kind of a radical transformation in his art making a few years ago. He'd become increasingly digital. And then finally he decided, you know what, I want to get back to making stuff that's analog. And he wanted specifically to work with ink. So he developed all these really interesting ways of working with ink that are surprising, amazing. You look at it and you go, how on earth did you do that? Like, what is it exactly? That, that was my first reaction when I spoke to him. I was like, what, what, what are you doing to make these things? And so that's what he uh, is going to teach us in this workshop, which is called Rethink Your Ink. All ink, but done in really interesting ways that um, taking ballpoint pens, ordinary uh, fountain pen ink, and just making them behave in really interesting ways. So, so it is uh, sounds complicated, but it actually isn't. It's actually, actually simple and fun. Elizabeth's in Phoenix. Hi, Elizabeth. In the airport of all places, too. Do come on by if you're if you're in town. Um, so yeah, so Derek is going to teach us this workshop in a, in a couple weeks. Uh, is it three weeks, four weeks. Those details. Will be, I'm going to talk about this workshop a lot, believe me, in the next few weeks. But uh, you can certainly find out more about it at sketchbookschool.com. Um, and I see that we have some, some. Uh, here we go. In fact, let me get a professional state restatement of what I'm blathering about. Rethink Your Ink with Derek Bacon, Saturday, May 8th, 9 a.m. Okay, and Rethink DB is the URL, bit.ly dot rethink DB. Um, let me just show you the trailer and show you what he's going to be doing. Hello, I'm Derek Bacon and welcome to my studio. Really looking forward to experimenting, trying out different things, take chances, get messy. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, it's very, it's very interesting stuff. Very different. He's just such a sweet guy, as you can tell from the little bits that we saw of him there. But, but a lot of this is going to be about just like playing and experimenting and having some surprises, but also making a really beautiful still life. And he's going to give us everything we need, even giving us like photos of bananas and avocados and things like that to work from. So it'll be very clear, but it'll also have strange serendipitous moments where things happen that you couldn't quite have anticipated. So that will be pretty cool. I see some of you are signing up already. That's really good. Um, and Elizabeth's got com some complaints about the audio levels. That's the way it works here on live because my microphone isn't working properly. So um, I can turn me up, but that might blast you out too. So anyway, um, what else did I want to say? I, 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 I'm going to try and go back to these letters because I think that they are pretty cool. And let me see if I can get them back up here. Come on, letters. Give us a break here. No, don't, that's not what I wanted either. That is not it. Here we go. Um, let me pull it up. Come on, letters. I know you're in here somewhere. 
You know, this is what you get for trying to combine the beauty of analog communication with vagaries and, and strangeness of technology. All right. Yeah, it's still misbehaving. So, but let's try it anyway. Let's try it anyway because it's really worth it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to have to come back next week. This, this, this is the only way around this. I'm going to come back next week when I've got my act together and we'll go over the letters then and we'll randomly pick a winner. But let's move back. Let's move on because this is becoming a bit of a nightmare. So, all right. So Derek's uh, workshop is coming up. We're going to play around with ink over the coming weeks. Today, I want us to work with whatever, whatever um, raw materials you want to use. You can use ink. I'm going to use an iPad because I want this to be uh, an experiment that we're going to do in, I guess I would call it reductionism, reductivism, reducing things, reducing things. Uh, honey, I shrunk the kids. No, this is about um, taking the complexity of something that we want to draw, the reference that we might be using, and trying to simplify it so that we see it more clearly. We see just the essentials. And over the last few weeks, we've been doing a fair amount of portrait work. We did um, that very interesting thing I showed you at the very beginning, which was doing an exercise with drawing uh, from a photograph by studying the photograph for a minute and then drawing it while looking at it for a minute and then taking the reference away altogether and drawing from our memories of the photograph, which I think was a pretty interesting process. The week before, we did uh, an eyewitness drawing, um, sort of like a police sketch artist, where we drew from a, a description that Morgan gave us of, of a person, and then afterwards we looked at the photograph. So various ways of playing with how we see. And that's what I wanted to work with today, was the idea of how do we um, see something that's very familiar and reduce it to its, its essentials. And I thought it would be fun to take a photograph of somebody who's iconic, somebody who we know really well, uh, and try and reduce that that image to its essentials, and then uh, kind of try and get as far away from the reference, the initial reference that we had, as possible. You know, so um, this is my idea: was to use Charlie Chaplin as our um, kind of representation, because Charlie Chaplin is, is incredibly iconic, right? I mean, we all know. We know kind of what he looks like, and there's just so many ways of interpreting the thing that we know about him. I mean, we there are people in on this planet who know Charlie Chaplin who probably never seen a Charlie Chaplin movie, right? But he is very much of, of an iconic um, character. So let's have a look at uh, just dif different ways that we can look at him, right? So certainly other photographs, this is another kind of classic Charlie Chaplin pose, but then look at all the different ways that artists have created Charlie Chaplin's. I mean, that's recognizably Charlie Chaplin, even though it really isn't in any way, right? Um, here's a Charlie Chaplin sort of ceramic piece. Here's a very strange Charlie Chaplin. It's too small, we'll skip that. Um, I just basically just Googled Charlie Chaplin. And these are all the different things that came up. Right? Here's like even a, almost looks like, like a stitched together piece. Sort of kind of realistic elements to this, but also, of course, it is a f an object of fantasy. Um, so, Everybody's channeling Charlie Chaplin through their style and coming up with very different solutions to how to depict him. And yet it's all absolutely recognizable as Charlie Chaplin. So, let's 
Let's give it a whirl. What do you think? Charlie Chaplin. Do I have your attention? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, this is Charlie Chaplin to do this morning. When I should have been working on the technology for this program. But uh, I was just looking at Charlie Chaplin and thinking, boy, um, let's play around. Let's play around with him. So what, like, what are the elements that we have to have? What are the elements we have to have in order for it to be Charlie Chaplin, right? So what do you think? What would you say are the bits we have to have? And what are the colors maybe we have to have? Um, you know, and I think it's not a matter of like taking this, excuse me, this photograph here and trying to draw it. That's not what we want to do. We don't want to, you know, if next week we have a bunch of these kind of reproductions of this picture, I think that would be disappointing. Um, or of any picture. I think, though, we want to just say, like, what is Charlie Chaplin? You know. Start with a face. Face shape. Ears. Oops. Um, what do we have to have first? The bowler hat, right? I have the bowler hat. It has to be a bowl hat that's sort of not too jaunty. I've made it a little jaunty, and it shouldn't be. It should be, you know, there's pathos to him because he's a clown, Charlie Chaplin. So we definitely want to have that hat. But it needs to be at the appropriate angle. So there's that. Let's overthink it. Gregory, let's go. Um, and then he has, uh, you know, of course, his mustache. I mean, that's probably enough to say that that's Charlie Chaplin, right? Let me get rid of that. I want to draw it again. I want to draw it in a way that is more kind of simple. Charlie Chaplin. So, um... What else can we do with it? What else? Let's just add some more elements and see if it makes it, if we're making more of a statement. Because this is not not really saying anything about Charlie Chaplin, right? It's just sort of, it's recognizably him. But let's just play around with, with how else we could make him. Let's just put on some of the other um, kind of things that he has. He always, he's always dressed sort of like a Edwardian gentleman in a way with a sort of frock coat, which... Is sort of inappropriate because he's a, he's basically a tramp. So, but he and then he has a this kind of collar that is uh, you know like a winged collar, and he has sort of a bit of hair. It's kind of crazy hair usually, and he has these sort of always kind of dark eye um, sort of eyelids. Maybe we can make him sort of saddish. I'm not saying something a bit more, but maybe we can do it better. Guy liner, as Jen points out, yes, guy liner. So, um, let's try something completely different, though. Because I said, you know, again, when I drew him before, it was completely different. So let's just keep playing. What are you going to do with it? Because we don't want to... I mean, it's just the fun shape his kind of overall look is. Let's just see how quickly I can do it. And still make it be Charlie Chaplin. You know, sometimes he'll have this kind of hair hanging down a bit, too, sort of looking... Ill kempt. I 
I think it's maybe it's the mustache that's the most recognizable part of it. He's not, he's not, he's, he's thin and sort of pathetic, so you don't want to make him big and broad. But he is fun to draw. Just stop over intellectualizing this activity and just admit that I just think he's kind of fun to draw. But maybe he needs some kind of background like this. All right, maybe that's the goal. The goal is to do a huge number of Charlie Chaplin's. All different. All different. And as we do it, we'll say, okay, we know now what the main elements are that he has to have. To be recognizable. Because you can change a lot of things about him and he's still recognizable. You could change the colors and you would still probably know that it was him. That sort of looks like him. I mean, I, if I told you that was Charlie Chaplin, you'd accept it. But I'm not sure that it really represents him. Why is that? Is it maybe because his... All right, so I think I've crossed some line where it's no longer Charlie Chaplin. It's just some sort of random person. So let's try something else. Let's try the whole thing. Like what's the whole, the whole body? I mean, it's definitely that pose, that pose with this sort of um, those feet that go out, kind of bow-legged, is that what it is? Bow-legged, but then the feet go out this way. A bit what it is. Make some Charlie Chaplin. Frock coat. The cane. The baggy trousers. Bowler hat. Looks like a sombrero. I would buy that as Charlie Chaplin. Somewhat. Cutaway jacket, right? That's what it's called, a cutaway jacket. All right, now I'm just going to get loose, looser.
Does that work? Would you know that that was him? It does look a bit like Oliver Hardy, you're right. Because it's fat. Let's make it even more so. Maybe this is sort of uh, a successful, well-fed Charlie Chaplin. Who's Who's put on a few pounds. <laughs> it's looking like a sort of like a depressed, overfed Charlie Chaplin. Pump up that hat. Yeah, he needs, need to, needs to be rounder, maybe. Sort of looking disheveled. Maybe it's raining on him. All right, how many how many have you drawn so far? Have you filled an entire sketchbook yet? That's what I'm hoping for. That is what I'm hoping for. What do you think? Are you buying this one? Buying it is Charlie? I think that sort of vaguely works. Francine says he's a deceptively complex character to draw. Well, it's interesting. I wonder why that is. What is it about it? Let's try and do. Let's try. Oh, this is good.
kind of feel like I'm getting more into the groove of what makes him Charlie Chaplin. How about you? Because I'm sort of starting to see like these are the elements that make him Charlie Chaplin. And then you can mess with everything else because because you'll still know that it's him. So still recognizably him, I think. Let's deal with that. <laughs> That's not what I wanted, but let's deal with it anyway. How am I going to deal with that? Maybe I'll deal with it this way. Interesting discoveries. All right, that's not successful right now. It could be perhaps with time, but I don't really feel like spending time on it. You know, once you've crossed me and you failed as a drawing, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm done with you. What am I going to do with that? That feels like a strange series of decisions that I just made. Let's see if we can redeem it. It's got to still be Charlie Chaplin somehow. Charlie, are you in there somewhere? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> oh no. This is very weird. It's a failure. Another failure. Let's get rid of you all together. I don't even want to come back and be reminded of that you existed. You know, isn't this the way it is when you're drawing? That you're just, you're in a battle to some extent. A battle to get something coherent. And to pull yourself back from your mistakes or from from your missteps. Hmm, I kind of like him.
I'm finding more and more that it's, I'm kind of thinking that it's his tie almost that's making him feel like Charlie Chaplin to me, which is weird. But that's sort of the thing that makes him Charlie Chaplin to me when I do it. It's not that mustache. It's not even the hat. But I don't know why that is. It just kind of feels right to me at that moment. All right, let's slow down. Let's get a little less wild here and just do something a bit a bit more conservative, shall we say. No, I can't, I can't seem to do it. I can't seem to uh, do something that's calmer. Seems like I have to mess with him, make him look more and more strange. But, yeah. No. It's the mustache that gives him the personality, I guess. And that's, that's how he expresses himself, through the shape of his stash. It's not working for me either. I'm going to go back to doing something that feels more graphic. That's just, that feels like the right direction to go for me. You know, so this, this hopefully you're seeing that this isn't completely uh, random, but that it's sort of a way of exploring your feelings about the thing that you're drawing, you know? I've tried a bunch of different kind of vocabularies of drawing, and I'm trying to find what feels like my interpretation right now. And uh, how I'm feeling about it. Because in the end, Charlie Chaplin is a vehicle for me to express how I feel at this moment, as opposed to how Charlie Chaplin is as a thing. Maybe it's not even important that it be Charlie Chaplin. Maybe it's more important that it just be expressive in some way, or Charlie Chaplin becomes the the beginning part of it. You know, he's the he is the sand that goes into the oyster, but it's not necessarily, he's not necessarily the point of this exercise. The exercise might be about something completely different. You know? Maybe I'm just feeling frazzled today. And so that's where my Charlie's gonna go, is in that direction of being frazzled. Doesn't even actually look like he's being frazzled. Looks like he's psychotic, but that's not really how I feel today. But that's how Charlie's feeling. Hmm, 
Madison to look like some kind of strange priest. But no, I'm going to bring it back to Charlie. Bring it back. Disturbing. Sort of Francis Bacon quality. Hmm. This is something completely else that I'm attempting here. Now that will turn out. fix that. Let's have a look at all these because they're kind of crazy. They sort of deteriorated in a weird way, but uh, yeah. Quite like that fat one. I quite like that one. Spiky. Strange loss in the No. No. Ghoulish, weird. Yeah. I had no idea where that was gonna go. But uh, yeah, that was interesting. I'd like to do this more. Not with you necessarily, I'll do it on my own. Won't trouble you with this, but but uh, there's something to me about this opportunity to take a thing and go over and over and over with it and take it into different directions and then maybe pick one of them and go deeper with it and see where it goes. But uh, you know, you know, what? let me show you this. This is a weird series that I did a long time ago. Let me show you this for the heck of it. Where is it here? I did this series, which is about c cigarette packs that I remember from from like the 80s when everybody seemed to smoke. And I just tried to remember like kind of what did cigarettes look like? I mean, I smoked back then for a few years in my early 20s, but somehow these became like a badge of like how people felt about the world. Not really how they felt about the world, but it was kind of like, this was your thing. Like, what was your brand? This is what you smoked. Um, so, yeah. I'm sure some of you smoke too. 
whether you feel like thinking about it now or not. But uh, yeah, so taking a series of things like this, just exploring variations on it, maybe, you know, um, seeing where it takes you. I mean, this is part of the, the fun of drawing, I think, is this opportunity to just plunge in and try lots of different things, tick, 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 and then hone it down, and then take one thing and break it apart and do variations on it. And get that's how you get to new and different places, ultimately. Um, not worrying about how much they suck, because frankly, <laughs> most of what I did right now wasn't exactly what I'd intended it to be. Um, but it showed me possibilities and opened doors that I probably wouldn't have anticipated because I was taking risks. I was trying out things that I don't normally do, um, or I was just channeling I don't know what. And so that is, uh, is taking a simple theme means you don't have to think about what should I draw. And you don't have to go and look for reference. And you don't have to even worry about that. But you can think about what are the graphic elements, the visual elements that make it be its thing. And then how many liberties can you take with them? I mean, if you go back to cubism, um, I think that that's a lot of what Picasso and Brock and those guys were doing was, was breaking things apart into their components. They were still somehow recognizable although the components were shattered. And it was also a reflection of like how we look, that we look at things, at the bits and pieces that make up things. Um, so if you rearrange those things, you know, maybe we could try it with something else that's iconic that you instantly know, Mickey Mouse. Um, you could take a logo from a, a brand. You could take, uh, you could do self-portraits. You could just take a thing and sort of splinter it into into various components and then rearrange them. And it's just a way of stretching your imagination and also getting away from the tyranny of realism and all the expectations that it carries with it, right? When, when you feel like, oh my God, does it look like Charlie Chaplin? Is it really photo, you know, Charlie Chaplin, like you can take enormous liberties and maybe you can do that with just about anything you draw and feel like, you know what? I can let loose. I can channel me. And a lot of times it's not the things you think you're going to be channeling. It's not the super conscious and deliberate things that quote unquote make up your style, but it could be things that are buried deep within you, things you, associations you'd have made before, things that seem to just sort of appear and you say like, oh, that's interesting that I'm drawing that way or that I grabbed that medium and decided that it was right for this moment. You can't overthink it. I can't look at those drawings that I just did and say, oh, they reflect the fact that I was late here this morning, the fact that I had technical problems, the fact that it's, I don't know, the middle of a pandemic, whatever, hopefully not the middle. But you, you see what I'm saying? That it's not, it's not up to you to, to control and decide why it is the way it is, but instead to let it happen and see what flows out. And then you can start to exert control over it after a certain point, because you can then say, you know what, this is feeling right to me. How can I make it more so? How can I go deeper with that thing? So you're back in the driver's seat then. It's not just this kind of anarchic storm and swirl of variables. You have control again, and then you can start to funnel it, to channel it, to clarify it. Because that's really what the creative process ultimately is about. It is about editing at some point, but it's important that you determine what that point is. If you start to edit too early, you sabotage the free-flowing form. If you never edit at all, it just becomes kind of a jangle of crap or chaos or randomness that doesn't seem to have any point. But you can, t you can create that energy by letting the sort of uh, suspending the critical part of it. Let that energy just kind of flow. And then at a certain point, when you feel like you've amassed a bunch of kind of experiments, then start to refine them. It's what, it's what gets you to new and different places uh, and places that are often truer to you, truer to things that you didn't even know about yourself. So anyway.
maybe I just got jangled and kerfuffled by by the chaos of technology. Um, what do I want to tell you? I want to sell you, show me your Charlie Chaplins. Put them on social media, Instagram, Facebook, tag them, SBS Draw with me. Put them on the schoolyard, sketchbook school, and uh, tag them, or don't. Tag them with Draw with me so we can find them. Because I want to see all these crazy Charlie Chaplins. I hope that they went in wild and different ways. Um, and that, just to bring it back to where we started, where we started was talking about Derek Bacon and uh, Rethink Your Ink. How you can have control to some extent, but also how you can let loose and let control get away from you. And how it can still be beautiful. It can still be expressive of who you are and what you want to say but you aren't necessarily controlling it. And that's, that's what Derek is doing with these ink techniques. Um, you know, I tried to show you how the iPad, which is a, you know, pretty technical thing, pretty kind of controlled thing. There's, it's not like ink suddenly goes crazy, but yet there can be an element of chaos to it and randomness. So those are all things that, um, you know, take you to new and different places. So. All right, some of you, I will see you in the after party. I'll be a couple minutes late, I think, but maybe we'll start letting you in or maybe more. I don't know. I'll see you in the after party if you're in Spark. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. And, and next week, we'll do something super controlled. And I will have everything plotted out, and it will be fantastic. But uh, not this week. <laughs>